Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome here to another IDA webinar. Thank you all for joining with us on this Friday. Um, and also, thank you for your patience as we are having some uh, technical difficulties with the link that we are sending out, a last minute swap here. Um, but I want to just a couple of housekeeping items uh, before we get started. Um, my name is Catherine Timmerman. I'm in a media strategist here at IDEA, and my specialty is in social. Um, and before we get started, just wanted to remind everyone to please mute your line on your browser um, in order to avoid some technical difficulties. Um, we also will be sending out this recording of the webinar um, after, most likely next week. And if you have any uh, questions throughout the webinar here, feel free to chat them to us um, and we will be answering your questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, the chat box you should be able to see in the bottom right-hand corner of the WebEx window. So with that, we will hop right in. Again, my name is Kathy Timmerman. Um, just to go over a little bit about my background, I started in paid social and advertising and marketing as an advertising operations specialist, and so my background is started off fairly technical, um, and that's the perspective that I bring here to IDEA and our clients. Um, I moved into a media buyer position previously, and now I have uh, come up as a media strategist managing a, a bunch of different channels. Um, but I was trained in direct response advertising and social specifically, so. I know most likely about uh, conversions, driving online purchases, sign-ups. I've mostly worked with B2C businesses, both large and small, national and local, uh, with multiple different types of, of objectives here in the social media platforms, such as video views, conversions, site traffic, et cetera. So we'll hop right into the agenda today in which we'll be going over a little bit about the differences in organic and paid social media on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, really looking at the differences and the relationship between both platforms um, and how they function as a user and both an advertiser as well. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some best practices, tips and tricks buyer from more of a technical perspective and an objective perspective. And then towards the end, we'll be talking about some consumer tips, so you yourself, how you can improve the advertisements you see on Facebook, um, ease your concerns a little bit about data sharing and privacy and things of that nature. The social media landscape that we're seeing today as marketers and also as users um, is a very crowded space. And so as you can see on the right-hand side here, uh, these are the counts of existing global social network users. Um, and we can see that Facebook really is one of the largest here at 2.3 billion. Um, LinkedIn, even Twitter, Snapchat, there are still lots of different audiences on there, but we see Facebook and Instagram as the dominant players. And so, Originally, as these uh, businesses and platforms were starting, we all know that it's a, a free social network. Um, and so it's really kind of moved into this space of pay to play. Um, if you remember in, in 2018, Mark Zuckerberg was testifying before the Senate in regards to the political landscape and data privacy. And on the panel, Senator Hatch asked Zuckerberg, uh, how do you sustain this business model in which users don't pay for your service? And Mark Zuckerberg kind of smirked and he said, well, sir, we run ads. And so um, as we have seen that landscape transform, really organic only reaches about 1% of your total audience um, and existing followers on these networks. And so we need to be able to scale our um, using paid advertisements and really retargeting users in order to increase the touch points that we see with them. And so social media is a great uh, market research study in the fact that there's so many data points, tons of user behavior, 
we're integrating more purchase behavior into the platform. And so as advertisers, we're really able to leverage organic media into paid as a market research study. Um, and so as we move forward here, um, this is one of the biggest frequently asked questions that I receive um, as a strategist of how do we know if we should boost organic posts on social? And really it comes down to, as I had mentioned, reaching more of your existing audience or potentially subsets of that audience to scale and get a big reach. For example, existing followers, users who have frequented your page multiple times. Um, and so using boosted posts is a great way to see the success in, or, in, or, in an organic post and then to put money behind it, knowing the success of that post, the engagement of that post um, to reach the greater audience. And so with Facebook and Instagram, I like to say that they're coming from the same family. However, they have different personalities. Um, so really, in, as we see in digital advertising today, it's all about re reaching the right users at the right time with the right message. Um, and it's really all about that marketing funnel that we all know fairly well. Uh, the awareness stage, educating a user, engaging, seeing how frequently they come back, how much content they're reading on our pages, both on Facebook or Instagram and off. And then finally, leading the user into the conversion, whether it's a newsletter sign up or existing purchase on your website. And so keeping those APIs and stages of that funnel in mind, Facebook and Instagram function differently in those ways. And one thing that I've seen a lot as a marketer is most conversion actions, at least purchases, are coming from the Facebook environment. However, Instagram is a great softball or tee-up way to have users engage with your content. I'm seeing large click-through rates um, and website visits coming from Instagram based on the nature of that platform. And so, um, talking about the audience and data in which these two platforms use, it's actually one and the same. Um, because these two companies are owned by the same entity, these targeting and audience pools are collected on both platforms simultaneously to make up what we know as the audience segments that we can target. So I wanted to briefly mention uh, a case study example of a local nonprofit in San Diego here that IDEA had worked with uh, for quite some time. And this local nonprofit had a lot of stories to share and tell about the existing clients that they have helped, the lives that they have changed through the work that they've done. And so we want to utilize both Facebook and Instagram for this client in order to share more visuals on Instagram, lead users to the web page of, of existing stories of their clients and then later retarget these users on Facebook um, in order to drive donations. And so we did see um, a fair amount of success utilizing those platforms. So as I had mentioned about the audience targeting, um, to answer another frequently asked question that I see is Instagram and Facebook use the same targeting. And that it actually is correct. Um, these two platforms, are not necessarily siloed. Um, you can see Facebook and Instagram placements as almost inventory sources. However, users' interactions um, with different brands online is actually captured in the same way among both platforms. So now we'll hop into a couple of best practices um, for paid social media, just in terms of setup, um, audience targeting, and some technical use cases. So pixels, as we all know, um, some of us <laughs> maybe love them, some of us maybe hate them. However, um, Facebook and Instagram does a great job um, of being able to set up these tracking elements within the code of your web. Um, and so they do have some fairly easy step-by-step um, instructions that you're able to work with in developers, your clients, whoever's actually placing the code on the page. Um, use these pixels to really attribute all the different 
questions as much as possible uh, based on what the users are doing on your site after they had clicked through of a social advertisement. And so um, one of the biggest recommendations I have is to really be able to track multiple stages of the user flow. And what does that mean really? Um, that means that on your objective, let's say if they purchase at the end of the day, um, we want to be able to look at how many users engaged with their ad, clicked through with the click-through rate, but also how many users got to the, the shopping cart or the checkout page. How many people bounced right before um, they inputted their credit card information and really converted. And so that's able to help us look at both the uh, site optimization off of Facebook as well as the effectiveness maybe of the ad copy or the image and the combination of the ad, how relevant the audience targeting is. And so recommendation here is to really set up multiple stages, um, necessarily just the end goal of the or, um, site visit. And so another uh, tip and trick also is to use Facebook's custom conversion. So uh, Facebook does a great job of kind of preset templates of page visits and purchases or um, shopping cart checkouts and things like that, but really lean into different URL rules, um, different tracking capabilities that Facebook offers. Audience targeting, um, as I had mentioned, is one of the most robust um, as a media buyer because we really, really can lean into um, not only interest targeting, but um, different video view audiences, uh, different people based on what they're doing on your brand's website. So building out a library of these audience segments is crucial in order to test ad set level um, and to really see if the ad is resonating with the audience there. Uh, first party data is extremely important in terms of audience targeting because Facebook is going to encrypt uh, these email addresses or names of users that you have in your CRM and to be able to segment those users based on lifetime value or to be able to set up uh, lookalike audiences to prospect and go after users who have similar behaviors to your existing customers. I had mentioned as well, audience testing is crucial um, in order to really scale and um, feed more money into different types of segments. Um, these audience segments also tell a story, so they're important as marketers that we share with both of our brands as well as internally our account managers, managers, um, creatives to really be able to help and guide uh, the whole team as we're going after the end goal for our clients. And one uh, question that I've actually come across as well is working with small businesses and the biggest question really is if we don't have a lot of sites, how do we segment these audiences? How do we work with them in a larger scale? And so really for small businesses, leaning into that CRM data, that first party data is crucial um, to be able to create lookalike audiences and really get that full, robust quality size of the audience as a small business or startup just starting out. And testing is huge. As we know um, in this modern day of the digital age, how crucial it is to understand how your content or your advertisements are resonating um, with those audiences. And so, um, one of the speakers that I actually had the pleasure of seeing in person was Steve Babcock, who uh, traditionally has a creative background. Um, and what he said about this testing mentality now in 2019 is that no one cares about what you think they care about. And so really the importance here is to create lots of iterations to make, make, and make more content um, in the best way that you can with the team that you have. Um, I believe really that the best testing mentality is to be putting two ads into one ad set where the budget lives, the targeting lives, and to really see which ad pulls ahead in terms of user engagement, um, ability to get someone to the landing page, 
more of the high funnel metrics in order to make multiple iterations of that winning ad copy or image. So as we know in a testing mentality, really look what the control and the variable is in that test um, in order to drive the, the best results as possible and be able to pivot faster. Facebook has a tool existing called Dynamic Ads in which you're able to upload multiple iterations of headlines, text, images. Um, I like to think of it almost as uh, putting together an outfit in the morning, having a full closet of clothes that you can put together multiple shirts shoes, pants, things like that, um, and Facebook actually is able to uh, rejigger those combinations to find the best performing ad. And lastly, going over um, kind of how to stay up to date with Facebook and Instagram. I've been working with these platforms for over three years, and I've seen multiple, multiple iterations of how their platform has changed, the tools that they've rolled out with. More specifically, starting off here with algorithm and artificial intelligence. So we've really seen how Facebook has, and Instagram itself too, has changed their algorithms within the platform and it differences in how it shows that content to users. Um, I think it leaves us marketers with a lot of questions, but um, it's important that we really keep up with the new product rollups that Facebook is doing and how we can keep up. Um, ads manager user interface frequently, even sometimes uh, I have a different version than say my director based on beta testing that Facebook is doing on the back end. So really pay attention to the interface that you're seeing compared to potential colleagues. Facebook tool changes, like I had mentioned the dynamic ads, um, Facebook is trying to roll out different attribution models um, and tools, reporting tools that you can see, so really staying up uh, to date with those elements. And lastly, the policy and privacy changes. Uh, we work here with an entertainment brand, and currently they're doing a campaign in which is misconstrued on Facebook's end as a political uh, campaign. and so. We've been seeing a couple of issues trying to launch content, getting things off the ground in terms of ads because Facebook is currently flagging it. It's kind of whimsical, satirical campaign that we have as a political campaign using certain keywords. And so it has been fairly difficult for us to um, keep pushing through these kind of roadblocks. Um, but I think because certain players in the field here are really, um, you know, abusing the privileges of Facebook, Facebook is getting more and more tight uh, with their policies, probably more to come as we see the political landscape change. So lastly, I wanted to go over um, kind of a couple of tips just as a consumer, a personal um, use of media of Facebook and Instagram in that um, years ago, at least with advertising specifically, a lot of messaging was kind of a spray and pray. Um, and in terms of seeing results, um, messaging resonating with certain audiences. Um, but Facebook, as we know, is extremely granular and targeted today. Um, but it's important to remember that us as consumers have the power to kind of customize those advertisements. Um, in a way that we can provide Facebook's feedback on what's relevant to us. And so one of the biggest um, recommendations I have, and I personally do on my own newsfeed, is to provide advertisers with feedback if this is not relevant, if it's competitive, if you're seeing it. Um, and so don't forget that this is extremely crucial um, in helping advertisers to customize their ads more and really find um, those targeting segments. And then lastly, I would say on this um, is to really understand and know your data sharing rights. Um, I think a lot of us click through terms and conditions, um, different uh, privacy rights that update with these platforms, and so um, really understand where you as a consumer fit into the market um, and how these companies are sharing your data 
comfortable with and what you're not. Um, and California is rolling out Consumer Privacy Act coming up here in 2020. Um, and so it's really going to be more of a, I would say, microscope on our advertisers and marketers um, in order to uh, be transparent in who is collecting the data, what you're doing online. This is starting on a state level, so we'll see where we will be from uh, with more of a national policy. Um, and so social media we might see as a, a bad element. However, there are a lot of possibilities capabilities, both as advertisers and consumers. So this wraps up really the content portion of our webinar. Um, again, we thank you for joining us. Um, we will have a couple of Q&A, um, so feel free to submit your questions down below. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. Uh, that was a lot of great information. Um, it looks like we don't have any questions at this time, uh, but we always ask our audience, if you have anything come up, please email us at info at the idea brand. We'll get these questions over to Catherine as our specialist to answer any social media strategy questions that you have, as well as if you ever have any questions on any of our other webinars, please contact us at any time. Uh, again, thank you, Catherine, for helping us out with this. Anything you'd like to add? I think so. I hope uh, everyone has a good weekend here. We're, um, yeah, we're coming up on a good week ahead. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the coming weeks.